right, we are back with a one-on-one -on -one with the one and only Drake Gallows right here on KECC Country with Devin over there fondling himself. I don't know what he's doing. He's scaring me. Thank God the camera's not on him. He's, he's going to need a new pair of britches. Um, anywho, <laughs> we're going to... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and feed you a couple questions here. All right. We're going to have... Uh, let's see, what championships have you held and who are your idols growing up? What championships have I held and who were my idols growing up? Uh, those questions have absolutely nothing to do with each other. All right. Um, well, of course not, but... It's, it's KHCC Online Radio. We gotta fuck something up. Exactly. Okay. We okay. I want to do the uh, the idols growing up gimmick first. When I was a young boy, I'll just say uh, I was okay. Here, here's a an image for you. When I was uh, 13 years old, I was five foot three, and I weighed about 260 pounds. So I was uh, your width with you know like a child's height. My width with. Uh with Rook's height. With Rook's height. I was very fucking wide, and I had long, scraggly hair. I looked, it, looked, it was like a mullet almost. You know, like 80s uh, John Laronitis hair. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It, but I didn't even have the spike. You know, I didn't look like fucking... It looked great. It looked awesome, you know. Um, I hate to name drop. I mean, I won't ever do that again, other than the growing up part. Um, so I couldn't, I couldn't really get a girlfriend or anything, so I did everything I could to lose weight, and I went from 5 foot 3, 270 pounds, to 6 foot 2, 6 foot 1, I'll, I'll, I won't give myself that much credit, uh, and 185 pounds. And then after I cut all that weight, I started to lift weights again, and I ended up bulking back up to about 240. So right now I'm sitting on 240. But you had the height, so that helped. I had the height, so it helped. But uh, I think John Stone said it best. He goes, dude, for your age, you have the best build for a wrestler. Because he goes, you can fly, you can do technical wrestling. And, I mean, honestly, I like old school wrestling. I prefer to keep it on the mat. But I'll go to the top rope and do a moonsault whenever I feel like it. Right. Know? Like today, I'm thinking moonsault. I'm in a giant arena. If this if this place is packed out, I gotta do it. Anyway, um, uh, so being a thick kid, uh, I looked at a thick wrestler. Can you give me any guesses on who my favorite wrestler was? Oh, there was a ton of thick wrestlers. Thick guy that made it to the top, WWF champion. Uh, oh goodness, there's a ton of them. Defeated Triple H on Raw for the WWF title. I believe it was Triple H. I don't know. Probably wasn't. Doesn't matter. Mick Foley. Confused. Okay, there you go. That's not Dick. That's might have been The Rock or Steve Austin. Doesn't matter. Anyway, he was a big old boy. That was actually The Rock that he defeated. Did he beat The Rock? Yeah, it was The okay. Rock. Anyway, so the, I looked at a guy like Mankind, and he was a, I mean, let's be honest, he was fat, and um, a fat guy like that who can make it to the WWF at the time and become the top guy, two times, two time WWE champion. I thought it was three, but maybe I'm. At least, I mean, dude, at I least don't twice. remember. At least twice. I mean, the third time might have been a, an occurrence, but I don't remember. The most thing I'm, I remember about Mick Foley is I remember watching Beyond the Mat as a kid, and at that very same time frame, Jake the Snake had just bought like a, uh, a, uh, he had bought my grandmother's mobile home for a crack house. I didn't realize what he was buying the house for. And I mean, this is a this is a pretty well kept story. I've never really told anybody this, but Jake the Snake in um, Austin, Texas, uh, bought a house. He bought it almost um, fifty or sixty miles away from his actual home, so he could get away for the weekend and he would go smoke crack and do whatever. Bought the home for my grandmother, very small house, and um, he was one of my favorites too. So when I met Jake the Snake, you know, I was intimidated as hell as a child. And Mick Foley was my favorite at the same time. And I go and I watch Beyond the Mat, and I realize that Jake the Snake's a crackhead. I realize that wrestling is fake, and Mick Foley's, you know, he's a family man. You know, he's not a superstar. He's just a normal guy like me. I mean, to see Jake the Snake in that condition was heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. But Jake the Snake, just because he had the snake with him, Mick Foley was also one of my favorites. I mean, uh... And, uh, you know, keep in mind I was born in the 90s, you know, the early, early 90s, so uh, obviously one of my favorite tag teams had to be the Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, mm -hmm. the Dudley Boys, which kind of spawned the birth of backyard wrestling with all this, you know, breaking tables, breaking ladders, hitting each other with chairs nonsense, which turned into my brother and I, Christopher Crow, 
at the age of, you know, eight and ten, you know, throwing each other through cardboard boxes and fucking breaking sheet metal and um, sheet rock and just, you know, finding anything we could to tear up and break. So, uh, you know, Mick Foley was probably... I would have hated to see your backyard. Oh, my God. It was trashed. It was straight up. We had dug all the grass up. It was straight mud after we got... We were throwing bicycles at each other. We did everything. Had the big tin barn. That's probably where my bike went when I was a kid. (laughs) We had the, in the back of a crow backyard. We had the big tin barn, you know, and we would climb up on the barn and jump off onto the trampoline and do swantons on each other. And I always did the headbutt because I was a big Benoit Mark. Loved Benoit. Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, before he got fat, you know. <laughs> before he went to the WWE, Rey Mysterio was my favorite, you know. So a lot of those guys were the guys that, you know, really had a big effect on my career. Um, to the championships, uh, I'm a four-time... SWCW All-American Champion. Uh, one time I had to share it with Bobby Starr. We were co-champions. Uh, that situation was odd. But uh, eventually I went back and I won it. My fourth reign I won it against Bobby and unified the belts. Threw his in the trash. Kept my own title. Um, I have been the Whiplash Wrestling. I'm to check out SRPW. I think they dug that one out of the garbage. Oh yeah, they did. I've actually seen that uh, exact belt. And I told Ray Martinez what I did with it whenever I took it home. I jizzed on it. I hope he enjoys having it in his home. Um... I've been the Whiplash Wrestling Heavyweight Champion um, out of Topeka, Kansas. Uh, I had a one-night uh, occur- occurrence. First time I was there, opening contest was a battle royal. I was the, in the final two against a guy named Kabuki, not the original. Um, uh, he dumped me over the top rope. I noticed that the referee wasn't looking, so I slid right back in. Ref turned his head. He saw me in the ring. He saw Kabuki on the floor, so fair and square in my opinion which was one of my favorite title wins in history because my grandmother Peggy and uh, my father and a couple other relatives from the Kansas were able to see that you know and that was one of the first times they'd ever watched me wrestle so that was a big moment um, I've been a former BYEW heavyweight champion that was the first title I ever held I defeated Chris Chaos for that in a no holds barred match uh, where I gave him my uh, finisher the bid farewell off of a ladder and mm-hmm. pinned him from there and uh, uh, I have been a two time entertainment champion. Both times I won that title, I defeated Bobby Starr. uh, Once in a unification dog collar match, once in a ladder match, where I gave him a side effect off of the top of a ladder through a table, and I pulled the belt down. So, um, as far as I know, I I think that's about it. You know, I have a title match coming up against Canadian Red Devil for the caution title at BYW, so I plan on winning that, so we can add that to the list. Um, And uh, as soon as I can, uh, I'm going to try to work my way up. I'm going to try to uh, get a chance at the uh, SWCW Hardcore Championship as soon as I can. That'll be a, that'll be an interesting match with you and Kareem Sadat. It is a Kareem Sadat right now that has the title? As far as I know. Well, you know the way the Hardcore Championship goes. You'll never know who the champ is at the time. But, you know, no matter who it is, I'm looking forward to a good transition from being a traditional wrestler at the time. I think 2012 is the year that I uh, enjoy some hardcore wrestling. All so. right. We'll take another break, and we'll be back with one more segment with Drake Gallows right here on KHCC Country.